In this video, we're going to focus on the power rule for derivatives. So let's say if we have some function f of x and it's equal to a variable raised to a constant, x raised to n. So x is the variable, n is the constant. What is the first derivative of that function? According to the power rule, it's going to equal n times x raised to the n minus 1. So let's say, for example, if f of x is equal to x squared, then the first derivative, we're going to take this constant, move it to the front. So it's going to be 2 and then times x raised to the 2 minus 1. So notice that in this example, n is 2. So we have a 2 here and a 2 minus 1 on top. 2 minus 1 is 1, so we get 2 times x to the first power, or simply 2x. Now let's try another example. Let's say if f of x is equal to x cubed. What's f prime of x using the power rule? So in this case, n is 3. So it's going to be 3x to the 3 minus 1, which 3 minus 1 is 2, so it's 3x squared. Now for the sake of practice, Go ahead and try these. So d dx simply means that you're differentiating x to the fourth with respect to x. Feel free to pause the video as you work on these examples. I want you to master this topic. That's why I'm giving you so many examples. So using the power rule, which is n times x raised to the n minus 1. This is going to be 4x raised to the 4 minus 1, which is 4x to the third power. So that's the answer for the first one. What about the other ones? So n is 5 for this example, so it's going to be 5x raised to the 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4, so it's 5x to the fourth power. Here, n is 6, so it's going to be 6x to the 6 minus 1. And so that's going to be 6x to the 5th power. And the last one, n is 7, so it's going to be 7x raised to the 7 minus 1. And 7 minus 1 is 6, so it's 7x to the 6th power. And so that's how you can use the power rule to differentiate monomials. Now what about this one? What is the derivative of x? Feel free to pause the video and think about that. Use the power rule to get the answer. Now, what is n in this example? Well, keep in mind, what we have is x raised to the first power. So therefore, n is equal to 1. So this is going to be 1x to the 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. And what is x to the 0? Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So this is going to be 1 times 1, which is simply 1. So the derivative of x is 1. Now what about the derivative of a constant, like 4? What's the answer? Now, if you saw a previous video in my calculus playlist, that is the constant rule for derivatives, you know that the derivative of any constant is 0. But how can we show this using the power rule? Well, first, we need to rewrite this expression. 4 is the same as 4x to the 0, because x to the 0 is 1, and 4 times 1 is 4. So these two expressions are equivalent to each other. Now, we can use the power rule on x to the 0. So in this case, n is 0. So we're going to have 4 multiplied by 0, x to the 0 minus 1. Now, 0 times anything is 0, so the whole thing is equal to 0. And that's one way we can show that the derivative of a constant is equal to 0 using the power rule. Now, sometimes you may need to differentiate rational functions. How can we use the power rule to differentiate 1 over x? What is the derivative of 1 over x? What do you think we need to do here? 
if you get a rational function, which is basically a fraction, rewrite the expression. That's the first thing you need to do. So take the x variable and move it to the top. So this is going to be x raised to the negative 1. So you need to be familiar with properties of exponents. For example, if we had 1 over x to the 4th, this is the same as x to the negative 4th, if you move it to the top. Whenever you move a variable from the bottom to the top, the sign of the exponent changes. So it changes from positive 4 to negative 4. So in our example, we had 1 over x, which is the same as 1 over x raised to the positive 1. So as we move the variable from the bottom to the top, it now has a negative exponent instead of a positive exponent. So keep that in mind. Now we can use the power rule because it's in the form x raised to the n. And we know that the derivative of x raised to the n is n x raised to the n minus 1. So in this example, n is equal to negative 1. So this expression here, that's going to equal negative 1 x to the negative 1 minus 1. So that is negative 1 and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 x to the negative 2. Now you can simplify this expression because most often the final answer is not going to have a negative exponent. So what we need to do is take the x variable and bring it back down to the denominator of the fraction. So the negative 1 will stay on top. So we're going to have negative 1, but on the bottom, x to the positive 2. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. And that's it. Now, let's try another example. Let's say if f of x is 1 over x squared. What is f prime of x? Use the power rule to get f prime of x. So first, we need to rewrite the function. Let's take the variable and move it to the top. So we know it's going to be x to the negative 2. And now, we can find the first derivative by using the power rule. So in this example, n is equal to negative 2. So following this expression, f prime of x will be equal to negative 2 x raised to the negative 2 minus 1. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. And once we have this answer, which is the first derivative, we simply need to simplify it. So let's take the x variable and move it to the bottom again. So the negative 2 will remain on top. And on the bottom, we're going to have x cubed. So that's the final answer. That's the first derivative of 1 over x squared. It's negative 2 divided by x cubed. Now, let's try one more example with rational functions. Go ahead and differentiate 1 over x to the fourth power. So let's rewrite the expression first. Let's take the variable and move it to the top. So this is going to be x raised to the negative 4 power. And now, let's differentiate it using the power rule. So the exponent will move to the front. So it's going to be negative 4, x. And keep in mind, n is negative 4 in this example. So it's nx raised to the n minus 1. So it's negative 4x raised to the negative 4 minus 1. And negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Now, we need to rewrite it. So let's take the x variable and move it to the denominator of the fraction. So the negative 4 will remain on top. And on the bottom, we're going to have x to the fifth power. So it's negative 4 divided by x to the fifth power. Now, let's say if we have a radical function, like the square root of x. What is the derivative of the square root of x? Go ahead and try that. So using the power rule, we need to rewrite it. The square root of x is basically x to the 1 half. So there's a 1 
in the exponent of x. If you don't see a number, it's a 1. However, if you don't see an index number for a square root symbol, it's always a 2. So it's x to the 1 half. Let's say if I had the fourth root of x cubed, this is x to the 3 fourths. If I have the seventh root of x to the fifth, this is going to be x to the 5 over 7. Or if I have the sixth root of x to the 11th, this is x to the 11 over 6. So you could see how you can convert it from radical form to basically an exponent. Now in this example, n is 1 half. So this is going to equal 1 half x to the n minus 1, or 1 half minus 1. Now we need to get common denominators. 1 is the same as 2 over 2. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is negative 1 over 2. So let's rewrite this expression as a single fraction. So right now, the 1 is at the top, and x is also on the top. The 2, however, is on the bottom. But we need to move x to the bottom. So it's going to be 1 over 2 x raised to the positive 1 half. Now keep in mind, x to the 1 half is the same as the square root of x. So we can write the final answer as 1 over 2 square root x. And so that's the derivative of the square root of x.